What is going on YouTube? I'm your boy Jimmy the Don and today we're actually going to talk a little comic book speculation. This is a new segment I hope to uh, have on the show every week and this week we're going to talk about the new Disney Plus series Loki coming out June the 9th. So let's get started. This is the Small Town Collectibles YouTube channel. So before I jump into these books that we're going to talk about this week, guys, of course, want to ask you to hit that subscription button if you're not subbed up already. Turn on that notification bell so that you're notified when I put out new content. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video and a thumbs down if you don't. Um, and leave a comment below. Let me know. I'm going to go through a bunch of books here. Let me know if there's anything you're specking on that I'm missing. Um, anything that just sounds crazy uh, that I bring up here. This is just some research that I did and I thought I would share it with you guys. It's something that I do myself anyway and I thought well you know you're always looking for YouTube content so why not share this with your audience. So that's what I'm going to do today. Alright so we know Loki, uh, the Norse god of mischief. Um, I'm really looking forward to this series. Um, I've always enjoyed Loki in the Avengers movies um, and the Thor movies. Uh, it's one of my favorite characters really to watch. Um, and so I'm excited. I'm pumped that he's got his own, um, you know, series. And with the, you know, how good uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier and WandaVision were, uh, like I'm really looking forward to this. Now Loki is, um, seems to be based around a lot on time travel and that's some of the books that we're going to highlight here. Um, and then two, some of these books are going to be true, true speculation. So uh, just kind of a forewarning, uh, you know, buy at your own risk. Um, do your own research. You can use uh, videos like this as a tool, but do your own research uh, before you make your purchases. So uh, first one, and this is a, really a true speculation book, um, and that's Journey into Mystery number 632. Now, this is the first appearance of Thori the Hellhound. Now there's been a lot of speculation, and I believe maybe some confirmed speculation, that um, young Loki will appear in the series. And Thori the Hellhound is actually young Loki's dog. And he's provided a lot of comic relief over the years in the comic book, and I think that would translate really, really well um, you know, to the TV screen and a series like Loki. So next up on the list is Thor number 364. Now, Another character to specu speculate on is Throg. Now the reason I say this is because Throg is actually, it was released or reported that Throg is going to re be receiving his own Disney Plus inspired Lego figurine. So that doesn't, of course that doesn't mean anything when it comes to him being in the Disney Plus series, but it's at least interesting. Why would they create a Lego figurine of a character that they're not pushing for some reason? So I don't know. So that's where speculation comes from, stuff like that. And so, but I think that's a pretty good, um, you know, I think that's a, some pretty good information for speculation. So Thor number 364, uh, the appearance of Throg, could be a definite book to pick up. Then you've got Thor, the son of Asgard, number one. And this book is the origin of Thor, Loki, Balder, and Sif. It's a 12, 12 issue limited series. That explores the Thor, that explores Thor's and the other characters' lives when they were younger, and you know, I guess you give consideration to this just because where time travel seems to be, you know, such a central theme for the Loki show. Uh, younger, you know, viewers may want to find more out about the characters. Um, and it, it may drive interest in a book like this. So that's Thor, son of Asgard, number one. Uh, you know, origin of Thor, Loki, Balder, and Sif, uh, and Sif, excuse me, um, may be a book that you want to try to pick up. Next up, you got Journey into Mystery number 622. Now, this is the first appearance of I Call, a future Loki who is merely an echo of Loki's younger self. Now, the reason there's spec on this one is, well, you got to have spec, right? You got to have something to talk about. So Loki's motivation to become a hero could occur after he meets an older version of himself and he's displeased with who he sees he has become in the future. So that could be the thing that changes him uh, into a hero or you know, wanting to be a hero and an anti-hero in the universe. So Journey into Mystery number 622, first appearance I call, could be a book that could have some legs. So our next book is Loki, Agent of Asgard number one. 
Now, we don't still don't really know who the villain is going to be in the series. They do a pretty good job of, of kind of keeping that stuff quiet and allowing the space market to run wild. Um, but if the show itself was to borrow significantly from the Asian of Asgard storyline, then the villain could be King Loki. And he first appears in this Loki Agent of Asgard number one. The king is older, and he's an extremist version of the god of mischief. So he's ultimately responsible for annihilating humanity in that timeline. Now, Loki has evolved into an anti-hero in the MCU. So King Loki could represent what he could become. It's unlike the books that we're probably going to talk about. Speculators haven't really caught on to this uh, book yet. Um, sales that I saw were still $10 and below on eBay. Um, and so I think this is a pretty good low risk investment that has a potentially big upside. So this is a book that I've been picking up and I've been looking for and that is Loki, Agent of Asgard, number one. Our next book is Dark Reign, Young Avengers, number one. Now this is the first appearance of the second enchantress, Sylvie Lushton. Now, it was rumored that a young girl had been cast in the role of Sylvie, which everybody is assuming is Sylvie Lushton, right? Um, but the, the girl cast was much, much younger. I guess the speculation of who was going to be cast, they were much younger than, than the uh, Sylvie Lushton that appears in the actual comic book. So, Dark Reign, Young, young Avengers number one, um, first appearance of the second Enchantress, Sylvie Lushton, could be in the show um, because Enchanter, Enchantress has been rumored to be one of the characters. So, but then you've got Journey into Mystery number 103, and that's the first, impe first appearance of the Enchantress, Amora. And again, as I was saying earlier, it's been rumored that the Enchantress could be the villain in this show. Um, so that Journey into Mystery 103, first appearance of the Enchantress, Amora, and then the first appearance of Sylvie Lushton could be books to be on the lookout for. Okay, now these books that we're getting ready to talk about now are more books that have probably been picked up on already. Um, and things that have you know we've seen through trailers and leaks and things like that that are a little more confirmed for the show. And the first book is Vote Loki number one. Cover arts by Trad Moore. Um, and the Loki trailer revealed that he will wear the same headpiece as he is on this cover and a Vote Loki button. So this book raw on eBay is going for about $49.99. Um, the last sale I found was June 1st. Uh, and a graded copy went for 99 bucks. So, you know, not huge speculation just because the book has the headpiece he's going to wear, just depending on how big of a part that plays in the series, I guess. But Vote Loki number one could be a book you might want to be on the lookout for in your back bins, you know, that kind of stuff. Now, all the trailers that we've seen, there seems to be the Time Variance Authority, the TVA are going to play a big part in this. So Thor number 372 is the first mention of the Time Variance Authority, and they are the watchdogs of the time stream. So all the trailers we've seen, you know, Loki is detained by the TVA. So almost definitely they're going to be there. Uh, we'll see how big of a part they truly play in the show, I guess, when it gets started. But their first mention is in that Thor number 372 book. Then you've got West Coast Avengers number 62, and this is the first full appearance of the Timekeepers, the beings that have the ability to manipulate time. Now, the trailer indicates that the TVA is the bureaucracy of the comics, utilizing Loki as their agent to, sit, to fix some issues with history. Yet, the mentions of the Timekeepers indicate that they may end up being the secret power behind the TVA and the possibility that they're using Loki to foul up events to, for their own ends. Now, we saw the trailer, we know that there's some mention of them, but we don't know if they're going to physically appear. Uh, this is, I would say, probably a minor key. Um, last sold 1999 Raw on June 1st, and those sales, I couldn't find any slabs, but those sales range anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks for that book. All right, then we've got Fantastic Four number 353, and that is the first appearance of Mobius M. Mobius, the chairman of the TVA. Uh, of course, that character is going to be played by Owen Wilson. Big Owen Wilson fan um, and love it. So Fantastic Four number 353 is his first appearance. Now, 352 has a panel that shows a Mobius clone, but it doesn't provide a character name. So I guess that's why they consider 353 um, the first appearance, but you may want to look for 352 as well. 
Um, and like I said, man, looking forward to Owen Wilson back on screen. Love that guy. And that this cover too, the 353, is the first cover appearance of Mobius as well, but it's only on the direct edition and it's in the UPC box. So fun fact. All right, now we've got Avengers number eight. Now this is the first appearance of Nathaniel Richards as Kang the Conqueror. Um, he was previously known as Rama Tut and later Amortis. Now, Nathaniel's also the father of our favorite Fantastic Four member, Reed Richards. So it's speculated that Loki's antics in the Disney Plus series may be what caused Kane the Conqueror to actually show up. And it's been confirmed uh, that Jonathan Majors is actually going to play Kane the Conqueror in Ant-Man 3. Um, so, and there's rumors that he's going to appear here in Loki. So it may be Loki that ends up drawing Kang to the universe. Um, or it could be the lay that we're going to talk about in this next book, Avengers number 23. And that is the first appearance of Ravana Renslayer. Uh, she's a time traveler who is romantically pursued by Kang. Now they have cast this, uh, role. Um, or they're calling this role Judge Renslayer, so we're all assuming that's Ravana Renslayer. And that's, and I will totally crush this name, but I, she's a great actress. I know her from The Morning Show, and that's Juju Mabatha Raw. Um, and she's the ones we've seen in the trailers and, and all the leaked stuff. So um, Renslayer holds a lot of deep connection to the upcoming Ant Man movie. Um, and I know that's probably going, you know, true comic book fans, it probably excites them. You know, in the comics, Renslayer is a name associated with Ravana, a character who first appeared in comics in Avengers number 23. Um, and since her role um, uh, in the animated series, The Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Um, so, yeah, she could show up. Kane could be following her because he loves her. Um, and uh, that could be how he comes to. Loki's able to create all kinds of trouble. So um, then we've got Loki, Agents of Adgard number two, and that's the first appearance of Verity Williams, a friend and ally to Loki. Uh, Loki can shapeshift, right? And he can shapeshift into a woman. Um, and he, he does that after he previously inhabited Sif's body. Um, now, it there are reports that Loki will appear as a woman uh, in the show. And the reason people are really kind of grabbing onto that um, is because Diamond actually sent out a notice to retailers say, stating that they're going to issue a trade paperback titled Loki Mistress of Mischief. Now, Loki, and this is what, how it reads, Loki reborn with the Asgardian cycle of life begins again after Ragnarok. Thor's brother Loki comes back as Thor's sister. Um, Loki returns with a new sense of purpose, seeking a fresh start to write her story anew. Loki first became the mistress of mischief in the epic tales from J. Michael Stransky and Oliver Coppel's legendary run. In this new collected edition, Loki, Mistress of Mischief, trade paperback, which goes on sale July 14th, 2021. So, the spotlight is put squarely on Lady Loki when she was introduced around the time of the Siege storyline. That makes sense because through the character has uh, though the character has since been used when it's revealed um, that the god of mischief god of mischief is able to switch between genders on a whim. As for Lady Loki, the original comic book version was resurrected is who was resurrected Loki who took over Sif's body as his own. Now rumors have been swirling for a while. Uh, that Sophia De Martino will play the female Loki in the upcoming TV series, but it's also been rumored that she could play the Enchantress. So you may get a little bit of both, you may get one. Be interesting to see, but the fact that they're releasing a trade paperback around this, I think is definitely interesting. Next up, we've got two more books to go. This is Thor number 617. This is the first appearance of Kid Loki. Um, it's confirmed that James Ville, because he posted it on his Instagram, that he has been cast as Kid Loki in the Disney Plus series. Um, so it looks like that's a foregone conclusion. And Kid Loki will be in the show, and his first appearance is in Thor number 617. And the last book on our list, of course, is Journey into Mystery number 85. And that is the first appearance of our main character, Loki, the Norse god of mischief. Uh, you also got the first appearance of Balder, the half-brother of Thor. 
first appearance of Heimdall, the Guardian of the Bifrost, first appearance of Tyre, the Norse God of War, first appearance or cameo appearance of Odin, the Allfather seen from behind, and the third appearance of Thor. So, of course, that's a book. I would call that a blue chip book with as much as Loki has shown up in the MCU. Uh, Journey to Mystery number 85. And it's still, it's expensive, but you can still get one reasonably priced. And probably one, if this show is great, probably better go ahead and get you one now so so that's journey into mystery number 85 and that is the first appearance of our main character all right guys that is our list of books potential spec books for the new disney plus series loki um let me know in the comments below if there's any other books that you're specking on any of these that you might think are just ridiculous um you know, like I said, I, it was the research I did. These were the books I found. And again, as I said earlier, you know, buy at your own risk, do your own, um, you know, uh, research and pick out the books that you think you want to buy. But hopefully this gives you some idea of maybe some books that you can start looking around at. All right, guys, that's all I got. I can't wait uh, for the new Loki series to start. Uh, I'm pumped. It's been a month since I think Falcon and Winter Soldier ended. So I'm, I'm ready for some Marvel goodness on Disney+. Plus. And Loki, I believe, will definitely deliver. All right, guys, remember, subscribe, like, hit that notification bell, leave a comment below. Enjoy Loki, and I'll see you next time.